This video is sponsored by Squarespace. It's the leading one-stop shop website platform, whether for your merch, your art, or your business. Stick around to the end of the video and I will tell you more, but until then... Take a second to thank today's fantastic video game user interfaces. It's the thing that the game shows the player, so the player can select the thing the game wants you to play. I know it's a weird thing to fixate on the part of games you're not playing, but something about them, the, the choices, the design, they have always fascinated me. Wow, inspired. But why do most of them from my childhood look like a Buddhist mantra? Continue, restart. Exit. It all makes sense now. This is the meaning of life. Anyways, menus have evolved to get you straight to the options. Your equipment, your upgrades, your brain worms. Thus, many are functional and not so much stylish. But come on, that's okay. Especially when games have a lot of reading. Ah! JPEG. JRPGs. The origins of this genre are entirely text-based. I mean, when they added a JRPG character to Smash, his gimmick was text. So I think it's fair to say that a lot of games like this should be given a pass for their not so interesting, maybe base level sort. Yeah, just hold on a sec. Persona is one of my favorite series. I like it so much, I've actually played one of them. And with these games, we can see Atlas makes the best menus. It balances style with function beautifully. But how? You got so many systems, personas, social links. Okay, 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 calendar? This is too much. That's why we need to take a look back, all the way back to the entire history of this series. Like, there's actually a lot of game, are you serious? There's not, there's no way this is actually all the game. That's right, we're looking at the beginning. The first persona. the fuck is this? What is that, an atom? I could show you any part of this game and you'd be like, th how do these relate to one another? This is not Persona. This isn't even footage of the game, but you'd believe it. But when did this series evolve past Windows screensaver? Persona 3. This is when a pervasive, detailed, and highly complex game design facet permeated all parts of the game. Blue. The corner, blue. Highlighted text, blue. The school, the uniform, the results screen, blue. Blue, 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 blue. blue. A clue, a clue. But this was 2006, and to put that into perspective, this was the pinnacle of game design. But you know, this was their first dive into this. Sure, every character looks like they're holding in a sneeze, but this menu made a splash. It gives me this idea that something devastating is looming in plain sight. This game for its time really focused on the monochromatic UI. Everything here just pops. And it's not doing anything really special, but it has all your menu options and everything looks really good. I know, it's not crazy, but for the time, I mean, this set up all of the facets that we're gonna see later. And I mean, this is all the DS did. Bye -bye. Yeah, later, asshole. In summary, I'm blue, and if I were green, I would die. <gasps> Two years later, this would be refined in Persona 4. And by refined, I mean yellow. Talk about a thematic shift. Persona 4 went full 70s with its UI and style. Small choices like circular outlines, kaleidoscope transitions, and rainbow lines. And God, this is such a vibe. Soft corners in this brightness, it fully communicates the themes of this game. God, if this one was so good, I cannot wait until the next one. <clears throat> but it's not like nothing happened. Look, they released the first two Persona games and upgraded the UI. Look, it, it's red now. Like the UI it really pops. Oh my eyes! Yeah. Cath Catherine, look, th that's the first time they made a game on this gen of consoles. Catherine! Don't yell. Anyways, um, uh, what what is next? Actually, is there anything actually here to talk about? Bro, are you good? Okay, I'm fine. Low, 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 low. Yeah, I'm good. So you know that we out there. Nobody's surprised at this revelation. Ah! 
this. This right here. This thing, you see this? Oh, and the battles, the battles! However, what isn't commonly known is the man behind this game's UI. So please, give it up for Tomohiro Kumagai. M more like Kumagui. Persona 5 destroyed all structure from its predecessors. Literally, everything about Persona 5 does not conform. The logo, the 5, is climbing over the P! The press start, this dude can't keep his shit together! Poor guy's like 6'1 and he's sleeping with the small blanket. Even the name isn't Shin Megami anymore! The 5 ate it! I mean, I know, it looks great, but is this pause menu even successful at being a pause menu? Really? We briefly touched on it, but Persona does a lot of things with its pause menu. It's like several games packed into one. Social links, personas, your party, your equipment, your items. How does it make all of this simple to traverse while being beautiful to look at? Like this, that's how, it's like that, it's just like that. Actually, it's, look at this, it's just like that. Everything about Persona 5 from its menu to its story is about rebellion. Whether that's to society standards or menu design. Look at this thing. It introduces itself with Joker slamming it on your face. Every letter on the screen, it's on the line. Even text boxes or menus in the overworld. I got the soda. Like compare that to the Persona screen of 3 and 4. The information is already on a slant. The box, it contains all the abilities. It's jagged, crooked, but still clear. I really think it has to do with these contrasting colors. Everything just pops right out at you. You can't help it. This thing, it's just so, it's so bold. It's just, you can see it from across the club. It's looking at you. You're like, sir, I have a girlfriend, but still, you make an eye contact. The color choices just make everything super readable. Like your team's health and SP. It's like looking for your cat in the dark until you see those two little peepers. Each submenu frantically moves Joker. Whether he's thrown the menu, pulling out his gun, slamming the party in your face, skills. He literally is stepping on it! System, he gets his grappling hook and swings on out like he's actually leaving the game. He even, kill he even kills himself. So relatable. And one detail I really like, even in his confidants, his silhouette is fused with that of his social link. Intrinsically saying that those he surrounds himself with become a part of him. In conclusion, everything about this menu is about taking back power. Literally breaking from the chains of restraint. I look at this menu and I feel like I can do anything. The shops continue this trend. You enter their domain expansion with swirling silhouettes that fit their tone. Why has you entered this green chain link fence dimension? Never in my life has it felt like a menu wanted to try and beat me up. Never mind. And when you're selecting your weapon, <laughs> just looks confused. <laughs> Let's continue with Persona 5 Strikers that... I mean, it's a little cliche, it's a little bit goofy, it's a little cute, but I don't know, it's exactly the one for me. Yo! <laughs> but it, it did introduce this sort of sub-menu thing where the characters would move to different positions with 3D models. Something that maybe we would see again in a possible future entry to the series who could really say... Oh, I say! I say! I say! This is a dream of a menu. I think it's so easy to see the goals of this UI because the entire game is built off of Persona 5. Even the categorization of each of these submenus. Look at this perfect comparison. It really does my heart good to see that these two got over their drug addiction. Kamagai really just dropped Trow and gave us a two flusher with this menu. So let's break it down. Well, like Persona 5. Each submenu cleverly animates our little e-boy based on the screen. Your items, he's judging why you bought so many soft drinks. Soda. In the equipment, he's looking at you like, You really putting that on you, car, you sick son of a bitch? But unlike Joker and his property damage, here we actually see Makoto slowly adrift in the waves, having an expression of ambivalence. I think the idea of deepening your bonds may have played into this water aesthetic. Actually, I read an interview where they said that was exactly the point. In the party selection, a shard of glass represents your closest allies. Maybe representing how the people closest to us reflect ourselves. He flies in on the number nine. Woo! Number nine! Yeah! Overall, this blue compared to the original blue feels a little bit more like a sad blue, but this feels more like a refreshing blue, like Gatorade, and that one's more just like Eeyore. 
I'm gonna be real for a sec. I haven't finished this game, so I don't exactly know what's in store or why all these thematic things are happening, so allow me to make a prediction. <laughs> okay, Brain, this is it. We're gonna show everybody that we actually know what we're talking about. <gasps> No, no, stop, stop, no. Oh god, stop it. Oh. Well, the color choices compared to Persona 5, they contrast a lot less. This makes things a lot less clear, like we're only really seeing a tip of the iceberg. Maybe this symbolizes the dichotomy of water. Floating in water, it represents a lack of power, moving at the whims of the waves. But perhaps, accepting you're at the mercy of fate truly allows you to feel free. Overall, I guess I have to ask, is there a point to all of this? Like, does this actually do anything for the player? Does this guy go, oh yeah, it symbolizes depravity of our human soul? Well, I like to think of it like chicken. Bland, dry, yuck. However, it's the seasoning that can make a dish. Your toppings, your sauces, your sides. It enhances what is functionally a good meal, but makes you want to come back for more. Every Persona game sharply identifies its game's core themes through UI. So much so, no matter where you look, it transmits its game's themes into your eyeballs without even a word. Well, that's all I have to say about menus, but I hope you learned today that there's a lot of thought that goes into the development of stuff all like that. Alright, we don't need to hear about that. Me. No, 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 no. You can't be mad at you. I'm the unconscious desires being held manifest right before your eyes, showing you the darkest parts of yourself. You're just like, this is stupid. This is stupid. I mean, no, you couldn't I mean, even don't if you want to. You call it yourself stupid. No, you you call it yourself stupid. You're, you're stupid. stupid. The flow, the video, we got stuff to talk about. And you're just going to be here just too idiotic to see the joke. Okay, you know, I've heard Sam that. You could not just put Sam that. I'm idiotic because I know I don't think I'm sitting on the toilet seat while you pee. I know you have the stuff there, but I don't even want to hear it. Hey guys, welcome to the end card, and once again, I have collaborated with Squarespace to sponsor this video. Squarespace is the definitive website builder to help you get your business off the ground. Like, you know what we were just talking about? This menu. It pops, it's exciting, and it wants you to stay here. You, you love navigating this thing. It's the same thing with a website. If it's easy to navigate, looks good, people are likely to stay longer. And when using Squarespace, it's incredibly easy to build a website like this. Like, I know for me, this whole YouTube gig, the algorithm buries you. It is so impossible to stand out, not to mention now for artists, AI is just everywhere. Which is why I've been saying, if you want to stand out, you need to really have that wow factor within the first second of someone seeing your work. But let me show you how Squarespace works. Boom. You start up, you pick a template you like, and you go from there. With their fluid engine, you can just pick up stuff, drag it, move it, and organize the components of your website to get a flow that works for you. A huge problem with HTML and CSS, assets. But with their asset browser here, it's as simple as throwing it in, having it for whenever you need it, and making it work with whatever website design you have. So whether you're selling your handmade merch or your art, Squarespace takes the hassle out of presenting it to your audience or buyers and lets you get back to doing the thing you do best. If you want to give it a try, go to Squarespace right now and get a free trial. But if you're looking to start a website of your own, go to squarespace.com slash relax relax and save 10% off your first website or domain purchase. Anyways, thank you to all of you for watching as well. The members, thank you for supporting the channel. With the help of sponsors and you guys, it takes so much of the stress off of sometimes YouTube just deciding not to push your videos, which happened to the last video, unfortunately. So if you could give this a like, it would help a lot. I don't love asking that, but literally, literally YouTube has gotten so weird the last few years. And I, maybe for you, you've noticed this as well, but for a creator, it it's really does feel like if your video doesn't perform well in the first day, you're toast. So. I mean, enough of that. I'm just grateful all of you are still watching this channel. You enjoy stuff like this. I love talking about menus, so if there's any other ones you really want me to talk about, go throw that in the comments down below. Uh, yeah, that's going to be it for me. Going to be back with another upload in two weeks. So, take it easy, y'all, and I'll see you on the flip side.